Hi everyone, I hope y'all are having a great day so far. I know I am. I just made some blueberry sweet rolls from Joanna Gaines' cookbook. My family and I are gonna enjoy those afterwards. If you wanna see me make more things, then definitely follow me on Instagram, but that's a whole nother thing. So today's video is going to be about me kinda doing a review over books that were recommended to me on Facebook. I don't know if you ever get those recommendations for books on Facebook, but I do, and I've had some good and bad experiences with these. I'll let you know how I feel about these books. I have polarizing feelings about each book. So, um, also I'm gonna be doing my makeup. It's gonna be a get ready with me. So this multi-purpose video. Thank y'all for watching. I'm gonna be doing a get ready with me and the kind of multi-purpose of this video aside from me talking about the reviews of the books that I read is going to be me using a lot of Charlotte Tilbury products. It's gonna be a get ready with me using all of her like airbrush products cause I just got them in the mail and I really, really love them. I tried them yesterday and like my face literally looks so flawless. Plus I'm trying some new beauty sponges. I did this type of video before and it literally, I had 40 minutes of footage. So I'm gonna try to get through this really quick. Basically, I don't know if y'all have ever noticed, but Facebook will give you ads that it thinks you're going to like. A lot of my ads are books, clearly. And I've had hits and misses. So there, how this happens is Facebook has an algorithm and then also it takes your cookies. It tries to recommend certain things for you. Of course, I get recommended books. The other day we were talking about how we're changing our pest control company and I saw pest control companies. Oh, I had prepped my skin with all of my regular skincare from Beauty Counter, which I can link that down below. Basically, I had read three books and I had different feelings about all of them. Each of them are a little bit steamy, so if that makes you uncomfortable, go ahead and click out of this video. <laughs> Maybe I will find a book that is a little less steamy. The first book I'm going to talk about is called Wicked Gods. So Wicked Gods is a book that revolves around the demigod sort of world. A lot of times you see that in more of like a YA type book, but as I was reading through, and that's exactly what I thought it was going to be, was more YA, I was definitely incorrect. <laughs> And that thought, it definitely got a little bit more steamy as it went on. It follows this girl. Her name is Daisy. And in the first part of the book, her parents die. Oh, so let me read this real quick. I have the glossary right here. So there's three different types of people. Norms, which can we have come up with a better name? Whatever. Fringes, they're gifted in special abilities, but low on the power level. Idols, gifted with special abilities, high on the power level. Levels 10 to unknown. So these are all demigods. So basically what they say is these demigods make up about 10% of the world, and then everybody else has norms and fringes. They have the ability to, oh, I'm, and I will put everything I'm using below. So they have the ability to kill people. They do all these crazy things, right? At the very beginning, we follow Daisy and her sister, and they are very young. And her dad basically works for a newspaper. At this newspaper, he's doing sort of research on like what idols are doing and like their abilities and such. Well, all of a sudden, these people kind of like bust in and want something from him. He says, no, I'm not gonna give that to you. And you know, they kill him. What you find out is that Daisy ends up raising Rosie and that she works at a diner. These four idols come in. There's like a time jump. They're kind of jerks to her. She doesn't like them, clearly. So she's behind on rent. She feels like the only thing that she can go do is to be a stripper. So like a whole thing ensues while they're at the diner, basically. These guys just basically treat her like crap. Daisy is behind on rent. After this whole thing occurs, there's a whole scene. There's four guys and basically one of them wants a pie. The other guy spills the pie on some Somebody else and there's this whole bet it's a whole thing but that's not important so this is where she meets the guys and they're kind of trash if she's behind on rent the only thing that she can do is strip she goes and strips and guess what those guys are at the strip club that's whenever the lust sort of situation starts with those guys and her after this whole thing somebody comes into the strip club and it turns out to be a principal of a school they call gifted academy so my first thought is could you have come up with a better name than gifted academy that's like my only thing <laughs> like come on like you know, this is a really interesting book and one of the only things I dislike about it is that it's called Gifted Academy. She ends up going to Gifted Academy and they're able to do a scholarship and Rosie's able to be taken care of. Well, turns out these guys are at the school too. I'm gonna look at my notes real quick because I have a lot of thoughts on this one. I really did enjoy this book, first of all. The only thing was Reverse Harem is not my favorite genre. I want 
her to pick one guy. Not a bunch, one guy. It's about 16% of the way through that I realized, oh crap, this is another reverse harem book. But I will tell you, this ends up being less of a reverse harem. There's really only like two guys that she actually likes. So the guy's names are Phoenix, Morpheus, Bryce, which is kind of the only normal name. And then we have Rufio. So we have all these guys and the main guys that she's really interested in are Phoenix and Bryce. So the reason why I like this book is because I'm kind of into this genre right now. The whole paranormal high school romance. I know that's weird. You don't have to tell me. I absolutely know that it's weird. Please don't judge me. I know it's weird. This book basically goes on about her experience at this school, which isn't great. Norms are supposed to be like treated like trash. People treat her very badly. Oh, she's the only norm that's allowed to be at this school, by the way. What you realize is that this principal kind of has ulterior motive with wanting her at this school. This is also a book bully novel. Enemies to lover, bully novel. If you weren't already able to guess, these guys go from like disliking her to liking her to disliking her. There's a lot of like hot and cold moments. My thoughts are I really did enjoy the book. I really did think that it was a good book. The idols versus norm thing is weird and some of the language goes from like being really childish to being really proper. The main guy who I think is the best is Bryce but then Rufio also is all about Daisy as well. My favorite things about this book, one of them is that it is a reverse harem but she ends up kind of gravitating towards more one or two guys than the other ones which is good. There is a lot of triggers. Now if you're not into like bully enemies to lovers, you know, high school romance, then it's not really gonna be your cup of tea, but personally, that is what I'm into at the moment, and I cannot stop myself, and I definitely wish that I could. Man, I am like such a noob with this stuff. <laughs> My card just ran out of base. I deleted some things. So I was very happy with this one. Literally found these books. They were recommended to me on Facebook. So I will put in pictures. So that first book, I really, really, really liked. The next book, I'm neither here nor there. So the problem with me in this next book is not that it was bad. It just wasn't the genre that I'm into right now. It's definitely more of like a romantic comedy, more of a enemies to lovers kind of second chance romance. So if that's something you're into, it's called Faking It With The Frenemy. So basically, there's this girl Kim her and this guy Wyatt they have a history so basically they lost their virginities to each other but they were broken up pretty well and like there's this whole thing well now she's the assistant to this really great guy Salazar she really likes working for Salazar so the only thing is that she's supposed to get a bonus of five hundred thousand dollars which I think is pretty, you know, outrageous, but I'll save my thoughts for just a minute. So she's getting a bonus of $500,000 after five years if she does every single thing that Salazar wants. Wyatt's ex-wife is getting married and he needs a date. So Salazar bets Kim's time with his son and then his son in turn gives Wyatt Kim's time. It's like a whole thing, it's very complicated. So for her time of four weeks, it's her job to find Wyatt a date that's good looking, that's not looking for his money and all this stuff. Well also at the same time who moves in next door and he has a daughter. So as you could tell, there's a lot of things, a lot of stuff that's going on within this book. So for about like the first half of this book, they are both mad at each other, clearly. He moves in next door, he has a daughter. So as he moves in next door, of course, chaos ensues. She's trying to figure out why he would move in next door. And I'll go ahead and tell you my thoughts. So this book was very cute. Of course, they end up getting together. They end up fixing their misunderstanding. It's about 60% of the way through, which is the type of enemies to lovers book that I enjoy. I don't really want them to keep on fighting like the whole entire book. That's not really interesting to me if they hate each other for like the whole entire book. And I explained that, that when I'm one of my videos, that I need it to be, I need to have some resolution. I need to have something that makes this, you know, readable. So my thoughts are this, everyone is a billionaire, which I'm like thinking, you know, whatever happened to millionaires are like that, is that like not good enough anymore? And then another thing that kind of got me was they kept talking about all these couples and all these like names. And I felt like I'm like, who are these people? How am I supposed to know their names? What I come to realize is that this is a series. And normally like with series, especially on the reads, they'll put like this book and then like, what are these? And then they'll say like the series. Well, this one was not it. I guess it's a spinoff of certain series. So each couple in the book that they talk about has a series, which I could put those down below. But for me, I was kind of confused. I was like, wait, how am I supposed to know the names of these people? But overall, it was super cute. There was just some weird stuff. Like one of my biggest pet peeves in romance novels is they say that people smell like something. It's always super unrealistic, like, oh, berries and cream. 
and in one of the ones that I think is more realistic but still weird in Beautiful Creatures he says that she smells like rosemary which is like more you know understandable this one of course he says she smells like something interesting and then also there is a point where he and his ex-wife kind of you know have issues and his ex-wife basically does not enjoy their daughter and feels like she was a mistake at this point whenever they're going at it he says, shut up, Geneva. And it's like, okay, dude, could you have said something a little bit more, I don't know, aggressive than shut up? She's talking about how much she doesn't like your daughter. Kim and his daughter end up getting along really well. So that's like a cute little moment right there, which I don't normally enjoy like single dad books. I don't know, I'm just not really, I'm just not really into that. But overall, it was super cute. It took me a while to finish just because I really wasn't into that specific genre at the moment. It was definitely precious. The whole thing with the $500,000 bonus, which I think is kind of unrealistic and a little bit weird, she has to do everything that he wants her to do, including getting this weird statue called the wife that he doesn't know what it is. So his son ends up having the wife and he wants to give it to Wyatt. So that's part of the agreement of her working with him and helping him. Of course she ends up going to the wedding with him, clearly, because why would it be any different than that? It's a very good book. It's very cute. Um, she ends up, of course, getting her bonus, which I just, where can I go where I can get like a 600,000? She ends up getting more. Where can I go where I can get like a $600,000 bonus? I'm trying to figure that out. I would probably give this like a three or a four star review. Oh, another thing that I wanted to talk about was this sponge. So I got new sponges um, because I started using liquid foundation again. I've been using powder foundation for the longest, so I started using liquid foundation and I decided that I wanted new sponges. This is a Sonia Kashuk sponge. What's funny is that this is how it starts out. So you got two of these for $7 and I really like these. So, And I'm using my Charlotte Tilbury um, airbrush foundation, which I really, really like. I really do feel like it's airbrush. So it is like a matte texture, but apparently it's hydrating. I don't need that. So that was just a little pause right there. The last book, I completely hated. I like absolutely hated everything about it. Um, <laughs> it's like the steamiest of all. There's definitely some steamy parts in those other two books, but this one is the steamiest of all. And I'm just gonna say I really didn't enjoy it. I'm gonna give like the smallest synopsis because I really did not enjoy it. So basically it's gonna be an age gap, uh, professor, student, and this is the plot. This is which this is what's gonna tell you how stupid it is. I don't know, I don't wanna say that because somebody worked really hard on this. This is how simple the plot is. So basically, she falls for her professor, he falls for her, and then it's like a hot cold romance. This is my whole thing. She's 19 and he's only 27. I'm sorry, but I did not have any professors that were only 27. And the reason why he becomes a professor is that he is of course a billionaire. What, I just can't get over, like what is this like billionaire thing? I don't understand. What happened to good old millionaires? Literally, nobody who reads this book is probably gonna be ending up with a billionaire or a millionaire, but that's not the point. The point is that of course he's a millionaire, he sold his tech company, and she just makes terrible decisions. She's 19. So in books, like they really portray people, in movies too, they re portray people who are that age as like more mature than they actually are. The main thing that you need to come away with this is that She's 19, she acts like a 19 year old. She makes poor choices. She doesn't realize that he's her professor. They just meet in a coffee shop and she's already obsessed with this other guy. And she's trying to meet this guy or like stalk him at this coffee shop. I guess he spills her coffee or something. So he gives her his sweater, which first is odd. I'm just gonna say he's a professor. He should know that he's meeting students and he shouldn't be giving them his sweater. Well, it turns out he's her communications professor. And apparently this communications class, mainly seniors go in there. And so of course he thinks that she's a senior. So that's like one of the running themes is that she doesn't want to say that she's 19 because he thinks that she's 22. So that's like a running theme right there. So whenever I see an age gap romance, I want there to actually be an age gap. And I want this to be more realistic. Like, can he be 35 and her be 22? Or even like in his 40s. Like, I know that that's weird. If you're watching this and you don't like romances, I'm sorry that this is kind of like a weird sort of thing with you. But a lot of time age gap romances, there's more of an age gap. Eight years is not like a big thing in romance novels. Just gotta tell you. One of the things I really didn't enjoy was that he like literally had no scruples about being with her. He didn't even think about it. He wasn't even like, oh, I'm gonna lose my job. Oh, Forbidden Romance is another one. Like he wasn't even concerned with like losing his job. So of course like she sees him in many different like 
accidental ways. She goes to a party, she's invited by one of the guys who is in the communications class with her. And so this guy ends up trying to force himself on her. She ends up seeing Professor. The names are Penny and Professor Hunter. And I just wanna say, like, I don't know if I said it before, this is very, very steamy stuff. So I'm gonna get really into detail. If that's not something that you want to hear, go ahead and switch out of this. I don't want to be offensive to anybody. This guy, Tyler, forces himself on her. And she ends up running out of the party and of course seeing Professor Hunter. And he says, you know, if you ever need a ride, let me know. And this is 10% of the way through and he already has her phone number. And I'm like, dude, like you don't even care. Like you have it be a little bit of a back and forth. Have it be a little bit of like of a hard situation. I mean, that's my personal opinion. My main thing, and I'm gonna just say, I am not a very like sensitive person, but there are sensitive topics that really bother me. And one of the things is, I don't know how the best way to say it, but like slut shaming. And round and about, what she says is, maybe if I wasn't dressed a certain way, he wouldn't be doing that. That was my first like, hmm. That left, left a bad taste in my mouth. I'm just gonna say the other part and then I'll let you know. That she ends up thinking that Professor Hunter is cheating on his wife with her. And her exact words were, I guess it's my fault because I shouldn't be tempting a married man. Here are my thoughts on all of this. I'm gonna keep it brief because I really could go on and on and on about this. But all I'm gonna say is, every person is responsible for their own action, whatever they may be. There is no way that you could dress, act, whatever that makes you susceptible to certain things. And everybody makes their own decision. You are not responsible for other people's decisions. And I do not like that sort of talk. It really bothers me because there are a lot of women out there who do think that their actions, the way they look, the way they act, are tempting to men and they cannot cover their way because they're tempted because of you. I don't personally like that. What kind of left a bad taste in my mouth about that? I was very, very put off by that. Oh, this is the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush powder. I just don't think that type of rhetoric is good for women to hear and see. I really don't. Especially coming from a female author, it just really, really, really bugged me. I'm just gonna say that. Another thing is, like this whole that she's 19 is really like a thing. Like, she just won't tell him, won't tell him, won't tell him. Girl, like, come on, just tell him. It shouldn't be a big deal if y'all were in love. This book is very hot and cold. She makes a lot of, like, assumptions about Professor Hunter. She does irrational things the whole entire time. So my biggest pet peeves, aside from that sort of rhetoric, is that it is a very hot and cold romance. She is 19, okay? I get it, she's 19. And if she was older, maybe this would be a different type of book. Literally 21% into the book, they kiss and they get together, right? Well, this is also supposed to be a forbidden romance. Okay, in my opinion, it's not forbidden. We have a Ross Geller moment right here where it's not against the rules for teachers to be dating students. It is frowned upon. I don't know about your college, my college, it was definitely against the rules. I'll give you some other books that I think are good if you're into like, the whole professor student romance kind of book. I'll let you know about that. I mean, I'm into it too. Who cares? Like it's a forbidden romance, but this is not forbidden to me. It's more of a, meh, well, I might get into a romance. And this is the Charlotte Tilbury brand new um, airbrush bronzer, which is really cute, by the way. If you want me to do a separate like video with my reviews on Charlotte Tilbury makeup, just let me know. Every time they get steamy, she doesn't call him by his name. She calls him Professor Hunter, which I get can be kind of fun at first, but like the whole book, Y'all are actually together. He's your boyfriend. Can you just call him James? Like, why do you always have to be calling him Professor Hunter? It's kind of like odd to me. I know the author had best intentions. I think this is one of her first books that she ever wrote. I give her props for that because I know that it's hard to write books, but I really didn't like it. I thought it was hot and cold. It didn't really go anywhere. It's like, this is like a whole series of like hot and cold romance. I don't like a book where all it is is about the relationship. There's no like thrilling part. There's no other thing that goes on. It's just, oh, he loves me. I don't love me, he loves me. It's just, that's not for me. It feels like it doesn't go anywhere and it's very just angsty. I don't like it. She has a whole series of this book. It's like the hunting series or something. I will never read that book. I will never read the series. It's not something I'm even into at all. So the end of the book, they end up clearly not together because it's a series. So there's gonna be more things that go on. And the reason why they're not together is because she finally tells him she's 19 and he freaks out. Like, dude, you were supposed to be like in love with her. Like he bought her these clothes in his apartment. This is another Charlotte Tilbury product that I'm using. Then he's like, eh, can't be with you because you're 19. Dude, 
You say that you love somebody. Love is supposed to be like unconditional. That's all I gotta say. Really? That's what's gonna tear you apart? Not all this like ridiculous Professor Hunter and her acting like freaking crazy and stuff at some points and stalking you and everything. That's like, that's the thing that she's 19. That's my whole thoughts on that. You could not pay me enough to read that second book. There's just a lot of things that kind of put a bad taste in my mouth. So I would say the first book, Wicked Gods, I really, really, really enjoyed. I'm definitely gonna read the next of the series and I kind of just wanted to do that, but I wanted to finish all these books first. I would give that like a four out of five. Definitely wanna read the next one. Taking it with the frenemies, I would give it like a 4.5 out of five. One thing that keeps me away from giving this a higher mark is that the leading man is kind of just, there's no like, for me. The last book, I would give that a one or a two. Literally, Temptation, I absolutely did not like it. I told you all my reasons I didn't like it. It was just not for me. Now, if you are interested in professor student romance, I would say Gabriel's Inferno. I would also say Losing It. If you like professor romances, you know those two. They're very popular. Those are my thoughts, y'all. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you want me to read more books, that I found on Facebook, just let me know. If you didn't like this, just let me know too. Um, if you wanted me to just do more of a review without doing my makeup, I could definitely do that too. Just let me know your thoughts on this video. If there was a book that you read on Facebook that you thought was good, bad, or whatever, just let me know. I really did enjoy some of these books, but the other one, I hate it. So, <laughs> I always the best way to say it because I feel like she worked really hard, but I hated it. So, thank you so much for watching my video today. Please subscribe if you're interested in videos about baby books and beauty and thank you so much for watching